WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is scheduled to appear in a U.S. court on the island of Saipan in 12 hours' time as part of a plea deal that could see him back on Australian soil within the week. Mr Assange left the UK earlier today, freed from Belmarsh Prison, granted bail after striking an agreement with US prosecutors. A few hours ago, WikiLeaks released this image of Mr Assange ahead of landing in Bangkok on the way to Saipan with the caption, moving closer to freedom. Let's get the latest on the situation with our reporter Michelle Rimmer, who is in London. Michelle, it all unfolded so quickly today in the UK. Talk us through what happened and how the media there got wind of the situation. Well, it was at around midnight here in the UK that WikiLeaks, the media organisation that Julian Assange founded, began sharing information on social media that the WikiLeaks founder had left the UK on a plane and that he was en route to the, the Mariana Islands where he would be uh, entering a plea deal with the US Justice Department. So it was really in the dead of the night that this information started to come out and a lot of people over here woke to the news that Julian Assange, who had spent the last 12 years of his life here in London in some form of Activity, be it in the Ecuadorian embassy where he sought asylum or where he spent the last five years in prison, uh, that he has now left the country. So there were videos that were being released which showed Julian Assange boarding the flight and signing documents. So it was really through uh, these publications that were made by WikiLeaks that people here started to learn what was going on. There was really no indication prior to that that a deal was so imminent and that he would be leaving the country and leaving uh, prison anytime soon. Uh, we were told by these WikiLeaks uh, post that Julian Assange had been granted bail by London's High Court on Monday morning and that it was later in the day that he left. So this uh, departure was really shrouded in secrecy and it wasn't until many hours after he actually left the UK that people here started to learn about it. Well, Julian Assange's wife Stella said the deal was touch and go at times. What do we know about how this plea deal came about? So there's been speculation for months that a pre deal, uh, some sort of plea deal was in the works, but there was no real indication as to exactly when or how that might come about. And uh, even now, there's been very little formal information about exactly uh, what it was that led to this deal and what negotiations took place and uh, what each party was looking for and what it was really that allowed them to settle on the plea deal that they've currently arrived at. Uh, Julian Assange's wife, Stella, has made it very clear that until this uh, deal is signed off by a judge, which is due to happen on Wednesday morning, uh, it's not set in stone. And so she's been very careful in terms of what she's said. But she has revealed that she believes that the breakthrough moment uh, was when the London's High Court began considering Julian Assange's constitutional rights in the US. So that is whether or not he would have been afforded the right to use uh, the US defense of freedom of speech if he were to undergo a trial in the US. And uh, last month, US uh, lawyers for the US weren't able to assure judges here in the UK that he would be uh, granted that defence if he were to go to the to the US to face trial. So Julian Assange was actually due to uh, attend an appeal hearing in two weeks' time here in the UK where the, one of the main arguments was going to be that he would not be given the same rights to a defence as he would have if he was an American, therefore he would be discriminated against because he's an Australian and that's something that the UK court was has been careful to ensure uh, wasn't the case, that he wouldn't be going to the US and not be given uh, equal freedoms and rights in the legal system there as an American would be. So that was an issue that was starting to play out here in the UK and uh, Stella Assange, Julian's wife, has suggested that that might have been something that really triggered uh, the US Justice Department to, uh, to, to reach this deal and to find a middle ground that both parties are happy with. And what else did Stella Assange have to say? I know you, you said that it was limited what she could say because the deal hasn't been signed off yet, but no doubt she was very relieved at the news. And also Julian Assange has so many supporters as well in London. Yes, Stella Assange has been made it very clear that uh, this is still not set in stone. Once again, until a judge signs off on this plea deal, uh, it's not confirmed. Julian Assange has, is not uh, the free man that um, everyone is sort of celebrating and uh, is very much excited uh, for him to be. However, she has also made it clear that she is very excited. She's very um, relieved that Julian is out of Belmarsh Prison, that this is 
uh, appears to be underway and that he will likely be in Australia where Stellar Assange is now very soon. Um, Julian Assange has an incredibly strong supporter base here in the UK and at all of his hearings over the last five years there's been a very strong presence. There's been hundreds of people that have turned up, they've had their yellow free Assange ribbons and they've made their presence known. So uh, Stella Assange in her uh, posts on social media, her initial posts when news of Julian Assange's departure from the UK began to spread, she thanked his supporters and she thanked the people and the activists that have pushed for his release, that have pushed their governments and that have uh, ensured that he was not forgotten and left in the UK um, un alone. And so she has been very expressed her gratitude to people that have supported Assange and all of his Assange's supporters, I have no doubt, will be very encouraged by the news that there is a plea deal underway and that he will likely be returning to Australia very soon. And Michelle, how did Julian Assange appear as he boarded that plane out of the UK? So we've seen videos of Julian Assange boarding this plane and he appeared to be in reasonable health. It's obviously very hard to tell from such a short video clip, but he was walking on his own. He was you know, dressed in civilian clothing. We haven't seen him in this way for such a long time. That's because of his reports of his poor health. Julian Assange hasn't been able to attend his own legal hearings uh, for, for a number of years now. He's appeared by video link a few times and in those instances he's sort of had to really refrain from uh, even being present for the entire period and that's because we've been told that his health was so poor and uh, that he was you know, spending 22 hours in solitary confinement and that this was having an impact not just on his physical health but also his mental health. So I think that Assange's supporters and his family can be encouraged to see this vision of him today on his own boarding the plane and uh, yeah, leaving the UK on his own steam. Well, we heard from Prime Minister Anthony Albanese that Australia has provided consular assistance to Julian Assange. What sort of assistance has he been provided? Well, Julian Assange's wife, Stella, has confirmed that the Australian government actually paid for his flight out of the UK. She says that this will be repaid by uh, the WikiLeaks Foundation. And so she's also appealed actually for Julian Assange's supporters to pitch in and to provide some money to help with uh, Julian Assange's new future. So that will be potentially repaying these flights, but also as he and his family establish themselves in a new country back home in Australia. Um, Stephen Smith, the uh, UK, the Australian High Commissioner to the UK, uh, he accompanied Julian Assange on this flight. So he had a uh, chaperone from the UK onwards to Bangkok where they had a refuel and now they've gone onwards to the Mariana Islands, which is a US territory in the Pacific. So he's had a, a consular escort in the form of the UK High Commissioner. Now, uh, when Stephen Smith took on the role of UK High Commissioner around two years ago, he made it clear that uh, he uh, would be offering and providing whatever consular assistance Julian Assange needed. And over that time, he visited Julian Assange in Belmarsh Prison. He was reporting back to us, the media over here, and letting us know uh, what his situation is and any concerns that they had for Julian Assange while he was in prison. So this has been an ongoing uh, support that the Australian government has uh, played for Julian Assange over here. Of course, there are other logistics that no doubt uh, have the, the Australian government was involved in, things like getting a passport and travel documents organised and just easing some of the logistics around making this deal happen. So uh, Julian Assange has been supported by the Australian government in this moment, but also throughout this, the last couple of years where there have been appeals made to the US and to the UK for, for Assange to be brought home and for this uh, pr pr protracted and drawn out legal saga to come to an end. Michelle, thanks for that detailed update. Really appreciate it. Michelle Rimmer in London. Well, for years, US prosecutors have been pursuing the case against Julian Assange, something Anthony Albanese has been pushing back against since he was elected. Now that lobbying appears to have paid off, as we have heard. Well, let's get more on this. We're joined by Voice of America's chief national correspondent and author of the book Behind the White House Curtain, a senior journalist's story of covering the president and why it matters. Steve Herman, always good to have you on The World as usual. How much of a surprise is it that this deal was struck? What are you hearing from the US side? Well, we got a little bit of a hint, Yvonne, uh, back in April that there might be something in the works when uh, President Biden 
at a news conference with the Japanese Prime Minister was asked about the Assange case and the pressure from Australia, and he said uh, he was thinking about it in terms of what uh, the Australians were requesting, but we didn't hear anything about it after that. So this did come as a pr surprise uh, emerging in the news uh, last evening here, and we, we haven't had a lot of reaction yet because it's still uh, early Tuesday morning, but we can expect a, a lot of people across the political spectrum weighing in on this on the hours ahead. Mm -hmm. And from the interactions with Australian government and Anthony Albanese, how much impact do you think uh, pressure from Australia has had on Julian Assange's release today, do you think? Well, it appears that uh, Australia's pressing of this case did make a difference. Uh, and that there were important strategic concerns the United States was looking at ahead of the Prime Minister's uh, visit uh, here. They certainly didn't want this question coming up from reporters at the top of the news conference, uh, presumably that they'll have one side by side uh, at the White House. And so this really removes from the table the single biggest issue impeding further cooperation uh, between Australia in the United States and now puts the focus of that relationship not on Julian Assange, but on China. Mm. How was it decided that the trial would take place in Saipan? How will this hearing tomorrow? Uh, will it just be a formality? What's expected to happen? Yes, yeah, so it appears it'll be a very quick one and it is a very strange a place to have a hearing uh, for a case like this because the charges against Assange were brought here in the state of Virginia. And Saipan and the Northern Marianas Islands is about as far away as you can get from here and still technically be on soil of uh, U.S. territory. And uh, apparently Assange did not want to set foot on the mainland of the United States. So that would have meant uh, Alaska, Hawaii, or um, in this case, uh, uh, Saipan. Uh, and it, we're just about uh, a little under 12 hours away from that happening. It'll probably be the biggest news uh, uh, in Saipan in many, many years. Indeed. Well, US prosecutors originally wanted to try Julian Assange on 18 charges. Remind us again of why the US uh, wanted him extradited and how long this case has been going on for. Yeah, it's about 15 years, Yvonne. And uh, basically, the United States government, uh, at least going back to the Trump administration when Assange was formally charged, was essentially considered of being a spy and one who had really damaged U.S. interests through WikiLeaks, uh, through the release of so many highly classified documents. Of course, uh, WikiLeaks and Assange always uh, contended that what they were doing was uh, journalism. And uh, essentially, uh, you know, when this all broke uh, during the Obama administration, there were no charges filed against Assange. This happened during the Trump administration, and now it is the uh, Biden administration that is uh, cutting this deal, which arguably you could say is a win-win situation. Assange doesn't end up serving any uh, prison time uh, in the United States. The Justice Department can say, we got our man. He did end up pleading guilty, which presumably will happen tomorrow, to espionage's charges. And so everybody uh, walks away, presumably, a little bit happier than they were before. So that's how you think the U.S. Department of Justice arrived at the decision to reduce those 18 charges to just one charge? What kind of negotiations do you think have been uh, taking place? Well, we don't have insight into what happened between the White House and the Justice Department. Uh, President Biden always maintains that he's very hands off on what the Justice Department is uh, is going to do. Of course, there's going to be a lot of skepticism about that in this particular case. We're already getting some reaction from Republicans. Former uh, Vice President Mike Pence is, is decrying this deal, saying that uh, Assange should have been prosecuted by the United States to the fullest extent of the law. And of course, we're just a few days away from President Biden and former President Trump facing each other on a debate stage in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, I would suspect that this is one of the things that uh, Trump is uh, going to uh, bring up to uh, try to paint uh, Biden as uh, someone who's uh, weak on protecting the national interest. Well, if Julian Assange had been convicted of the original 18 offences, his lawyers say he could have faced up to 175 years in jail. But what's the US government saying? 
Well, we're not hearing anything yet from the U.S. government on this except a, a formality of notice uh, about uh, the court appearance. And it will be very interesting to see uh, what the Justice Department and the Attorney General put out. Usually in any particular high-level case, they have a press release out uh, uh, immediately after the hearing. And uh, we can expect that they're going to have to say something. And, and the next time President Biden's before cameras, he's going to be asked about this as well. And just finally, Steve, if confirmed tomorrow in Saipan, will it be the end of the case regarding Julian Assange for the US? Or will there be significant repercussions to deal with in terms of it possibly setting a precedent or, as you say, being an issue uh, in the upcoming election to be discussed? Well, this case has raised concerns for many, many years, of course, uh, because uh, it's seen as uh, setting a precedent, uh, perhaps, for going after other journalists. But the question, again, is, you know, Julian Assange wasn't your typical uh, journalist, but uh, we have a lot of people online doing things now who call themselves journalists. And so presumably uh, they could be targets of prosecution in the future for similar releases of classified information. Steve Herman, great to talk. Thank you. As always, really appreciate your time. My pleasure, Yvonne.